Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Breaking Nashville. As always, you can go to our website, BreakingNashvillePodcast.com, or just follow us on Twitter at Breaking Nash. And I'm excited about this gentleman because he was just on with David Letterman, Robbie Johnson. Hey, how's it going? Before we talk about your career, because there's so much to get to, we got to start with David Letterman because that's what made me really go like, oh, we need to get him on. You perform uh, yeah. at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, that's where America got to know the Beatles, Ed Sullivan Theater. So, yeah. it's, I mean, it was an incredible experience, and I was so fortunate to have Frank and Jimmy Nichols, my co-producers, come with me as players because I I wanted them to be there for this great moment, and and they know the players from uh, Paul Schaefer's band, and they were you know texting back and forth, hey we're going to be on your show, you know with Robbie Johnson, Tom, we're going to do South of Me, and they're like hey we know that I'm following him on YouTube, it would be cool if we would play with him, so that's how I got to play with Paul Schaefer's band, wow. and that was totally an amazing experience you know to get it in the studio and then start jamming with the <laughs> with the cats and it was it was really amazing well and that was my question to you Robbie was that you know so many artists try for such a long time to get any kind of publicity and here you go and get right on to David Letterman that's pretty impressive yes that's what my publicist keeps telling me <laughs> that this never happens you know an independent artist that doesn't have a full album out and that doesn't really have traction on monitored radio, although I have, you know, had great success with South of Me on secondary radio. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's really unique. And on my first ever press release, you know, they Letterman just called back. The Letterman people called back and said, hey, we want Robbie Johnson. We want to break Robbie Johnson on network debut on national television. So that was really 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 cool thing to happen and because it really doesn't happen like that usually i would so love really to know next week you know after since your appearance is on what your itunes downloads your web clicks are like the david letterman bump and what that can do for a career that that's fascinating to me yeah i'm looking forward to that and see what happens and uh it was I mean, it's it, it brings a lot. You know, I have all these interviews today. Yeah. I'm in uh, uh, New York still, and uh, interviews back to back. And I have some. I'm going to be doing more shows. Uh, people were interested in having me on their show as well. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff. And you know, it's, it's it's pretty crazy. A lot of things going on. Well, the whole point of breaking Nashville is trying to learn the path that got you to where you are today, and you know, the path that gets you to David Letterman. So let's go back a little bit here. You are the actually the <laughs> second Canadian artist to be a part of Breaking Nashville. <laughs> uh, I'm the second. Yeah, Lindsay L. I don't know if you know who oh, she is. Oh, yeah, Lindsay, yeah. Yeah, she was yeah, on with us her, a few yeah. weeks ago. Uh, I'm always fascinated by this, though. So you grew up just listening to country music okay. in Canada. My, my story is really crazy because I'm from the French province where, you know, the only province in Canada where country isn't huge is Quebec, and that's where I'm from. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's kind of crazy, but most of my relatives live in Hartford, Connecticut, so every summer we would go to Hartford, and we would go uh, for, you know, Christmas vacation, New Year's Eve, and every long break we would drive down to Hartford, Connecticut, so there I fell in love with American culture, the TV, the blockbuster movies, and the music, and I would say I discovered uh, country music, you know, uh, through my mom, she was listening to Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton and all that, and I just fell in love with the with the music, and because to me it's healing music, and you know when you listen to M M Miranda Lambert's uh, this house that the house that built me, I mean it's it's healing music, yeah. and that's I I just love it, and my biggest influence has got to be Garth Brooks. And he's my mentor, and he's the number one reason I'm in country music. I'm shocked that I don't hear more of a, an accent. I don't hear an accent at all. How is yeah. that possible? Well, I kept you know, going back. Uh, my, my parents divorced. I was five, and we moved away in a small town an hour away from uh, the main border. And we, uh, I mean, we, we didn't have much. We were really poor, so... Uh, 
what I had was my imagination and American television because we fell in love with it in Hartford and going back home where it wasn't too uh, too fun then we just we kept watching American television and that's why I, I picked up the, the language and the accent and all that so when did you go okay you know what it's time for me to get serious about playing a guitar and become a country singer how old do you think you would were you well, see, that's another crazy part of the story is that I was always, you know, I was a sales rep on the road uh, two and a half years ago selling industrial products, hmm. never even thinking I'd be an artist. So it's really crazy to go from uh, a sales rep on the road and then last night doing Linneman. But I would always sing around the house all the time, you know, in the shower, like everybody in the shower. And I would write music because I'm a really creative guy. And on special occasions, I would sing to people songs uh, dedicated to them, and also at campgrounds, I would do impersonations of Elvis, <laughs> and also Garth, of course, that I love, but it was always, you know, you have to go back to work to pay the bills, and it was a crazy life, and a hard-working man, and then my wife decided, hey, you should, I mean, you should listen to you sing, it's really good, and there's something there, and she saw that I wasn't too happy in my life, so she pushed me in a studio to do a demo to cut a demo in a studio and that day I did a, a, a cool song that I had written and the guys in the studio were like man what are you doing here you should be in Nashville there's something there what? come on let's do this you yeah. should go and we put it on YouTube and Facebook and then I got in touch with uh, people in Nashville and that's how it started I just needed that little push because when I had that CD in the car uh, coming back from the studio it, I felt at peace with myself. I was filled with energy, and I said, "Man, that's that's what you're meant to be." You just didn't want to see it, so that's how it all started. So it's all really, you know, new. Yes, I always sang, but you know, to really be an artist, it's really you know not a long time ago. What was your experience when you first got to Nashville? Did you think that you were going to get picked up right away? Did you know it would kind of be a grind? Uh, well, hopes are always high. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, but you know I was fortunate to hook up with I I think the right people because and I keep saying that to people uh, it's hard to make it because it's so easy to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you have to get with the right people and and just just trust them and go with what they say and look their background and be very careful and that's why I did going in and but the funny thing is. With me being a sales rep, you know, the sky's always the limit. So I, I was always aiming for more. And people were telling me, you know, Robbie, uh, you're not going to.